Well, greetings. It's the weekend and this is your update and it is officially summer, which means it is time to hit the road and uh, go see some family, see some sights. So if you have the opportunity to do that, I mean, we always have such a great time just getting out, seeing the country and uh, just exploring and broadening our horizons. So hopefully you'll have a chance to do that as well. Continuing our series of shorts on the uh, Shires Day that we did at CU, Matt Nishida is going to talk about the reverse lead pipe, what it does, what it doesn't do, and uh, you know some of the things that you think it might do. So uh, check out that short. Reverse lead pipe does, especially on a B flat trumpet, is it actually creates um, less defined slots in the middle of the register, so from low C to G, and then as you get above G, it actually creates more um, defined slots in the upper register, more fluidity within the, the, register, the middle register, and then as you get up into the upper register, it creates a lot more stability and rigidity in slotting. That's why you see a lot of lead players playing on reverse lead pipes, because as they're getting up into the upper register, it's really helping them lock in the notes. It is a much longer lead pipe, actually, than your standard lead pipe, and that's why it goes into the sleeve of the tune and slide. The difference in resistance points from hill players makes it feel tighter. Even though that the reverse lead pipe in general is, is designed to make the horn feel more open. Then over on the podcasting store side of things, I found a really cool article this week that I wanted to share that was uh, eight tips for starting your podcast. And it covers a whole bunch of stuff that we've talked about before, but I, I like the way it was presented that uh, everything from show prep, you know, whether you script or not, I, I tend to like outlines and just general ideas, but not like written out scripts. Uh, but that's just me. If you're the kind of person that likes that kind of stuff, do that. Um uh, gear, that is definitely something we talk a lot about that uh, I can obviously help with. Uh, what software to use, how to disseminate, all that kind of stuff. Check out the article. This was from uh, Captivate.fm. And uh, yes, there are affiliate links in there. They're trying to sell you stuff, of course, but there's great information out there for free. So uh, check that out. Then uh, over on the Boomer side of things, our friends over at Maple Leaf Strings released a really cool video about how to rosin a new bow. We encounter this all the time. People buy a new bow from us and they call it, they say, it doesn't work. And we say, well, put more rosin on it. And if it still doesn't work, put more rosin on it. Well, here is a step-by-step -step from some real string experts on what to do. Tune in, it's an orchestral minute. This is new, but it's broken. It won't make any sound. Bows need rosin to play and applying it the first time can be tricky. Start by focusing on the first four to five inches by the frog. At first, it will be slippery, but it will slowly begin to build friction that you can feel and hear. It will start to sound like <laughs> Slowly increase an inch at a time and be aware of the slippery feeling transitioning to a rosin feeling. Keep increasing until you are getting full coverage from frog to tip. Apply rosin so that it is even, but not so much that when you blow on it, it turns into a rosin bomb. And that's your orchestral minute. Good tips, great stuff. We'll be on the lookout for more coming from our friends over at Maple Leaf Strings. And then over on the podcasting store <clears throat> medium page, uh, we're doing an essay rewind in honor of the uh, road trip that we're on. Uh, I remembered a few years back when we uh, kind of took a little bit of a detour and a side trip and uh, found a really special place. Uh, it was a grandma soda shop in the, in uh, Wilson, Kansas. And uh, it's kind of off the beaten path, but it was just such a fun experience getting to see the boys uh, get out of their comfort zone and for me to get out of my comfort zone and just to see some parts of America that we hadn't encountered before and how, you know, your unreality, your flyover country, if you will, is someone else's world and just getting into that and exploring that that really helps us to understand each other and build some connections so check out that essay if you missed it the first time so that is your weekend update as always thank you so much for watching comment below let me know what you think like share and subscribe and we will catch up with you next time if you enjoyed the weekend update do me a favor and follow us on social media subscribe to our youtube channels or visit our websites this is drew with boomer music company and the podcastingstore.com thanks for listening